Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I am Pastor Erica Gravely. So glad that you could join us this morning. You had to wake up a little bit earlier, but you made it to worship here. I'm so glad you're here because we're starting to take another step forward into getting us back together again. You, you might have missed the, the plexiglass box that was in the fellowship hall. I know you, you've had a great relationship with it for the past two years, but it's, it's gone. <laughs> That means we, we have the ushers back in place and uh, we'll be passing the plate this morning. Uh, so if you have that little green slip, be sure to fill that out this morning. Let us know that you're here. Any questions that you have about the life of the church that uh, bubble up during worship, you can write them on there and drop that in the offering plate. Any prayer requests that you have, you can put that on there as well. <clears throat> and. Uh, for those of you online, welcome this morning. We are glad that you are here with us uh, online in worship. So yes, let us know that you're here online. Type your name in the comment section and uh, uh, just enjoy the community, the special community that you have online. So no matter where you're at, I'm glad that we are able to worship together this morning. We are starting a new series looking at Jesus' uh, last seven words as he is on the cross. And um, that this is an intense moment in his life. And during the season of Lent, we are uh, taking this time to just focus in on those important words as he is on that cross, that they mean something, they have some weight. Uh, so we will be focusing on them, uh, seeing how they can help us in our journey of faith. And today we are looking at uh, the first words that he said on the cross, Father, forgive them. So we'll be, we will be meditating on that today. So let us start in song. Absolutely. Good morning. Will you stand if you are able? We're going to sing Grace Greater Than Our Sin.
Oh God of grace, we welcome you into this sanctuary. Our week has been filled with life's events of <laughs> difficulties and joys, and we bring them into here today to experience your grace. May your Holy Spirit rest upon us and enliven us in this time of worship. Here, now. Amen. Please be seated. As you listen to the anthem and look at the words on the screen, um, this talks about Jesus on the Christ. Can we know the pain he felt inside on the lonely day the cross held up the sky?
scripture this morning is from Luke, 23rd chapter, verses 32 through 34. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So you're at the, the all-you-can-eat pizza buffet, and uh, you're, you've had your first plate, and, and you find a slice that it's the best. It's got your perfect combination on there, all your favorite toppings, and you're like, I'm going to get that again. I really like that. So you walk up to the pizza buffet, and uh, someone's about five feet in front of you, and that person grabs the last slice of your, your pizza, your pizza slice, grabs it, and takes it away. And you're like, okay, okay. Or maybe you're uh, walking in, maybe this happened in church, in church this morning, or maybe sometime this week. There, you know, when, when there's someone in front of you and there's this awkward situation where they're, they're far enough that they could just let the door shut, or not too far, because it, it might look rude if they don't hold the door open for you. You know what I'm talking about, that awkward space. And they, they just decide to, oh, it's a little too far, a little too awkward, I'm just going to let the door shut. And they sh leave the, the door shut on you. It's okay, it's all right, I forgive you. Or, this is happening all too frequent nowadays, you are at a traffic light, and there's someone in front of you, and the light turns green, and nothing happens. They're probably, you know, finishing up that last word on the text or they're scrolling through social media because it's usually a light that lasts about five minutes. Okay, it's all, it's all right. So those little things, those sins, if you want to call them, that are committed, we're, we're okay. They're just little things. We, we can just let it go. And a lot of the times we can just let them go when, when we don't feel the pressure. There's, there's nothing on us. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not in a rush to get anywhere. I'll just, they'll, they'll eventually look up and see that the cars are passing them and they have to step on the gas. Or, you know, I'm at the pizza buffet and there's 10 other pizzas that I could pick from. I'm good. I, I, can, I can roll with it. It's okay. Um, or, you know what, I can open the door by myself. So uh, these, these are things that we can easily forgive, and especially when we, we're in a good place that we can offer that forgiveness and move on. And so at Easter time, we, we celebrate this, this act of forgiveness. Uh, that, that's one of the highlights of Easter, that, that the cross is empty, our sins are forgiven, we know that we can experience God's salvation because uh, the sins that, that are on that cross are removed. And so that's, that's what we celebrate uh, on that day, that death no longer has the last say. And we, we, but we see earlier, before that event, about how Jesus walks around in life and he, he talks about forgiveness. And so, since we read from the Gospel of Luke, I just want to keep to that Gospel to see where else in Scripture that he, uh, the writer talks about, well, Jesus talking about for forgiveness. And so, in this Gospel, there's the scenario where uh, a f uh, 
someone is, is paralyzed and can't get around, so his friends carry him to Jesus. Now, in other Gospels, this is where they rip the roof off and they you know, bring their friend to see Jesus, but this version is a little bit different. And so when Jesus sees the friend's effort and this man that needs to be healed, he, he turns to the man and says, friend, your sins are forgiven you. And then some people get a little bit upset about this. You know, who, who has the authority to do this but God? And he says, uh, but he does this so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so this is as he was with his friends at a gathering that he points this out, the forgiveness that is offered to him and offered to us. Now that was in Luke 5. So if we turn the page to Luke 7, in a scenario where he's with Simon and uh, some of the Pharisees at his home, and they're, they're having a, a gathering together, and uh, this woman bursts in. And all that we really know about her, all that's written about her, is that she was a sinful woman. That was her title. So she had done some things wrong, and people knew about it, and burst in on the scene and anoints Jesus' feet. And he uses that as a teaching moment for his friends and people in attendance. And he says, Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven, because she has shown great love. And then he turned to her and said, your sins are forgiven. So when we hear these words from a cross, from the cross that he is hanging on, it's, it's not just, well, it, Jesus is definitely not in control of the situation. He's not in a comfortable place. He's not with his friends walking around town, having a meal with someone. This is coming from a different place, a place where, uh, and, and it's, it's different from him walking around, and it's different from him as we hear the Easter story of the cross being empty. It's not where we see him in dazzling white and, and uh, the, the blood has been removed, only the scars remain. This is coming when we hear those words that Ruth had read, I'm sorry, that Ruth had said, they're coming from a different place. Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them when he is on the cross. While he is experiencing this, this painful moment that, uh, it, that seizes his whole body, one of the most excruciating ways to die at the time, that he is suffering and struggling, bearing the, the, the flogging that has happened to him earlier in the day, and he is publicly hung for all to see. So this pain and this shame that is surrounding him, he says these words. So what can we learn from this? That te Jesus teaches us that real forgiveness, true forgiveness, deep down inside that is working on you, is hard. It is difficult. It is a struggle. And so when we see Jesus on the cross and we see him share these words, he's challenging our ability to forgive. Is it only when we have the upper hand in the situation and it's like, oh, that's okay, no problem? Or is it when the cards are stacked against us, when we are cut down, when we are hung up for all the world to see? So I want to point out when he says, Father, forgive them. 
Who is it that he's forgiving? Who is he asking God to forgive? Now, we heard in scripture that he is hung up on the cross with two criminals beside him. Is he talking about them? Or maybe is he, is he talking about Judas who betrayed him the night before that started this whole process? Or may, maybe it's Caiaphas and the other religious leaders who arrested him and uh, tried him. Or maybe it's Pilate and his guards who took over the situation and had him beaten and hung on the cross. Is it them? What I think is interesting about this story, the series of events that unfold, is that, yes, you have these individuals, and we could certainly point to them, but there's this moment where Pilate brings it forth to the general population. He brings it forth for anyone to show up and say, what do you think of this man who says these things? And the public says, crucify him. And when he's on the cross, this is not some secret, isolated event, but it is exposure. It's meant to be exposure for all the world to see so that the, the Roman Empire shows that this is what is done for these rabble-rousers who want to claim authority over our kingdom. This is in the public eye, and friends, we are part of that public. The world, humanity, that is witnessing this and accusing Jesus of this. We are them. And so Jesus is bearing this weight of, of the, the bruises, the beatings that he has felt being up on the cross and the physical pain, but at the rejection of the entire world as he is alone on that cross. And then he does this. He, he turns to God in prayer, this conversation, and says these words, praying for us, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And so that he forgives us when we don't know, even before the things that we do, he shares these words, spreads them across humanity publicly for everyone to witness. So what do we glean from that? That real forgiveness stinks. It is hard. It is a hard task to do because it, it pulls at our egos because you know, we know we're right and we've been wronged and there is injustice and, and people must suffer because I have suffered, you know, an eye for an eye, something like that, right? That's not how it's really interpreted, but we love to, to, to find people in the wrong so we can accuse and publicly point them out and, and have them suffer as we are suffering because our, our plans, our intentions, our, our, you know, what we had has been cut down. It's been insulted, taken away physically, mentally, spiritually. And so it tests us and we struggle and it's hard. And especially when it's someone that we love that hurts us because we offer love to those people and then they turn around and do this. But I wonder, who is it harder to forgive? Is it harder to forgive someone you love or is it harder to forgive an enemy? I mean, Jesus talks about 
how it's, it's, it's easy to love, you know, the people you know, but, but to love your enemies, that's hard. And to, to pray for those who persecute you, I mean, Jesus is doing the example of that. He is in that conversation with God, and he is praying with God about the people who persecute him. Who are those, those enemies that you have? And how are you working on that forgiveness? I, I will make a public confession now. I was in uh, a small group of uh, my clergy colleagues, and uh, one of them is at a church that has recently uh, separated from the denomination, and uh, there is a lawyer who is helping uh, their church do that. And it has torn the church apart. And uh, she's very sad about it. And uh, at the end of our time together, we pray for each other. And I was thinking, we, we have to pray for that lawyer. We have to offer forgiveness for that lawyer. It's hard. It's hard to do when you've been hurt and you've been cut down so much and what you know is right, but they are children of God just like you. They deserve forgiveness as well. And so we lifted him up because that's what Jesus did when he was cut down. And so maybe that situation might not affect you, but in the the war that is going on now, and with Putin at the head of it, praying for Putin, for forgiveness for Putin. It's hard. But somehow it it shifts something in us. It helps us to see things differently. It helps us to understand a little bit more. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing it this way? What's behind it? And in that prayer, something happens. It's hard to hate someone when you are praying for someone and praying for an enemy, somehow in that interaction with God and the Spirit just loosens up your heart a little bit. If anything, it'll loosen the the grip of your hands out of frustration, that it just eases it up a little bit. So this is the practice, the hard practice I am asking you to work on for Lent to forgive. Even when you're in the middle of of a a raging war in your mind or in a relationship, how can you forgive? Friends, for the glory of forgiveness is yours. That is the Easter message. We know this. In all the things that we have done, God forgives us. And so we know that. And in praying for our enemies, our loved ones, the people who cut us down, we know ultimately we have won the war. We have claimed victory. And so can we offer that to that other person? So we pray to forgive as we have been forgiven. Now, someone asked Jesus in, in another gospel, you know, how, how many times should we, should we uh, give, forgive someone? Seven times? And, and Jesus turns and says, no, 70 times seven. And so this is the part of the practice that's going to make it hard is that somehow our brain just loves to go back to the places that hurt. 
And so while we may pray for forgiveness and, and you know, let go in that moment, somehow we fall back down again. And so this is where we need to practice that forgiveness again and again and again and again. Not only for that, the person that we need to forgive, but also to work on ourselves again and again and again. So we're going to work on that. We're going to work on that right now. I'm sure during this sermon, during this message, that person, that incident, those people have, you have conjured up in your mind. So it might have been something that happened yesterday or this morning or 20 years ago. I want you to bring that forth and we're going to pray for them right now. So I invite you to close your eyes, put your, put your hands on your lap, just face, oh, with, face up, feet on the ground, get in a comfortable position. And I want you to envision that person in front of you. And I want you to envision that light, God's light, is surrounding them. And I want you to repeat this in your mind after I say this. Oh God, this person is loved by you. Father, forgive them, for you know what they do. Help me to do the hard work of love, because you have done it for me. Amen. Now take that prayer with you in this season of Lent. Pray it again and again. Anytime you feel yourself sinking down into that place where you feel your body tense up and you feel your blood's temperature starting to rise, Father, forgive them. Amen. And now we come to this moment of prayer. We have forgiven others. Now it's time to work on ourselves. So you are welcome to come to the altar rail in prayer, or you can choose to remain at your seat. But the God of forgiveness is here, present with you. Oh, yes. Go ahead. <laughs>
O oh God of grace, we thank you that you offer your grace and your forgiveness before we even ask. That you have spoken your prayer across the world that we are forgiven. And so we ask for you to forgive us, O oh Lord, for actions that we have taken or have not taken. For when we hold hatred inside, that it burns inside like acid. Oh, forgive us, Lord, when we forget to pray or when we refuse to pray. For we have no idea of the pain that we cause, the suffering that we cause, the confusion, the worry, the fear, the doubt. Forgive us, Lord, for not being as loving as we should be. Oh God, your suffering is not required for forgiveness, for you walk the earth saying that we are forgiven. But you help us realize that you love us even when we make it the worst possible for you. We pray for those who are suffering in their body, mind, or soul. Especially we lift up Larry and Jean who are in the hospital. Oh Lord, take that demon from them. Remove the thorn from their side. May they know that forgiveness is an essential ingredient to healing. Receive our prayers offered in all humility as we remember and honor Christ our Lord who prays for us still. And we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now we come to a time of giving back. And we're doing it in a way that we've done it before, but a little bit differently. Times have changed, things have changed, but we are bringing in some, some new ways. <laughs> so uh, just want to share with you a couple different ways that you can give back, uh, not, not just through the offering plate, uh, but we are doing our egg hunt again uh, as we're celebrating people coming back together and we're looking for donations of candy and there will be a bin out there for you to drop your candy in and also need some help, some volunteers to be present and uh, just to see the community coming back and the kids coming through and just be a, a welcoming presence of Jesus Christ to the community. And then we have cross lines happening on Wednesday and uh, looking for some volunteers to help with that and uh, serve out food to those coming into cross lines. Uh, just a way, great way to, to bless the community. And also Easter lilies, we're uh, putting them on sale to decorate the, area, the chancel area for Easter and the proceeds from that will uh, help Mark Gideon and his incredible work that he does in decorating the chancel area. Uh, and also, uh, we, I, I'm so excited about this. Uh, we have hired a new band leader for Alabaster. His name is K.I. Emmanuel. That's K.I. initials K.I. And uh, he is a student at MSU, a student in music. Uh, so you might see him playing on the piano, but he has a 
wide variety of talents on different instruments, and he's, he's been doing this, I think, since he was 14? Yeah, 13, 14. 13, okay, even better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's quite familiar with it, and so uh, I, I love his energy and his passion, and uh, just uh, helping the band just give some great glory to God through music. So uh, please welcome Eman uh, K.I., and uh, we'll be blessing you with a song as we come together, uh, as we give our gifts to God through this offering. So may you give joyously and generously in Jesus' name.
this time, will you stand if you are able and join in our doxology. Continue standing as we sing Take, Take Up, up thy, thy Cross. cross. So before we go out on our way, I uh, wanted to share some, some things for you. Uh, so we, after, immediately after worship, we will be having our church conference to, uh, this is a conference, this is a meeting for members of the congregation uh, to uh, vote on the sale of the rental properties that surround our church property. Uh, this is a formality that's required within the Methodist Church. Uh, this is a motion that's been put forward by the Board of Trustees and Mission Vision, and so we need approval from the general congregation. Uh, and we'll explain a little bit, a more, little bit more about that after worship, but uh, members, you are invited to stay, and uh, those who are not, you are welcome to get a seat early for our chili and soup luncheon uh, that One Heart is putting on. Uh, so uh, it will be a cook-off, so there's some judging involved. So uh, have your taste buds ready to go, and uh, we'll be celebrating with some <laughs> cupcakes as well for uh, the birthdays and the uh, in the months, uh, it was a tradition that we're trying to bring back together again, a way to celebrate. Uh, so um, it was, that was powerful to hear, wasn't it? The, the band, um, I mean, the music program, I appreciate what the choir does, but we, we've kind of been in a, a little wilderness uh, uh, since the beginning of the year. So to just hear that sound, is such a blessing. Friends, we're, we're getting back together. 
uh, we're, and getting back together in a, in a different way, but we're doing it. Uh, so I am so excited that we're getting together. We're having fellowship over a meal together in our fellowship hall when just six hours ago, there were 40 people that were sleeping overnight at our shelter with eight dogs uh, that were, were able to, to house this life once again in our church. And just, I hope you're soaking that in as, as much as I am. And those of you who are online, we miss you and love you and know that you are with us in spirit, uh, but we still pray for the day when we can all be back together again. We're, we're getting there. We're, we're working on it. So friends, as you leave, by the power of the Holy Spirit, May Jesus' words on the cross work with you. May you meditate on them. May they inspire you to be better disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. Will you stand as we sing our choral benediction before we get ready to do our church conference? Thank mm -hmm. you.